Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about another terrestrial planet that might potentially have life on it. This time we're talking about a planet we don't usually talk about, Mercury. It seems that one of the recent studies made a suggestion that Mercury has transformed quite dramatically in the past few billion years and may have at some point been even habitable in some parts of this planet. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So when it comes to habitability, or essentially ability to preserve life and to create life and to have life evolve over time, and more specifically, have liquid water on the surface, we've always talked about three major candidates. Obviously, our planet Earth that had several cycles of habitability and changed its surface quite uh, dramatically over the period of about 4 billion years. We obviously also talked about Mars many different times and life possibly even still existing here somewhere beneath the surface. We've also talked about Venus, which once upon a time most likely looked like Earth and had a very large ocean, but also possibly still has life in the upper clouds. Although this is something we need to do, kind of investigate, and uh, hopefully some of the future missions will do just that. But we've never really talked about Mercury, which despite sort of looking like our own moon, and despite still being a terrestrial planet, is a little bit too close to the sun and uh, potentially just doesn't have uh, much atmosphere or really any other conditions to support water. This is what we've believed for many years, but the recent study sort of uh, argues against that. And it even presents an idea that maybe once upon a time there was liquid water, but that liquid water did not exist in the same way as it did on Venus and on Mars. This was water hidden underground. So what exactly are these scientists proposing? Well, first of all, when it comes to our own planet, Earth, we've actually discovered, um, at least in the last few years, life in some of the more unusual places here. I think about two years ago, I've talked about how we actually found life underneath our soil. Specifically, if you were to dig deep into the ground here and try to actually look underneath the surface up to about five kilometers deep, you would discover a tremendously massive world of various bacteria and viruses living and thriving underneath our feet. Also, a lot more recently, only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video, we discovered life inside the actual ocean crust, underneath the ocean, in the conditions where really nothing should exist. But we've also discovered bacteria living there as well. So essentially, finding life underground is pretty common here on our planet. And even though the temperature on the day side of Mercury can reach up to about 400 degrees Celsius or about 750 Fahrenheit, this doesn't mean that uh, life could not exist here in some of the darker areas or possibly in the polar regions where we have actually recently discovered quite a lot of water ice. And one of the recent videos even explains uh, how all of this ice is produced. But that's not really what these scientists are talking about. They're talking about some of the historical events that seem to suggest that Mercury has dramatically changed with time and may have actually possessed a very large ocean underneath the crust, liquid water underneath the planet. This proposition is actually based on the fact that if we were to look at Mercury today, as we have in uh, several different missions and more specifically the most recent mission was the messenger uh, mission that explored Mercury with a lot of different studies that it conducted around Mercury for several years we would discover something a little bit unusual. First of all, it seems like the planet has actually shrunk over time. And second of all, there seem to be areas on Mercury that suggest some kind of a implosion. Essentially, as if the ground collapsed, as if something um, sucked it in or something made it collapse from, uh, from within. And this is something we didn't really expect to find. And some of the scientists, in the past at least, explain this away as possibly the result of a major collision on Mercury which almost certainly did happen. And the collision itself very likely did actually dislodge a large part of the Mercury's mantle, although this collision here was a little bit too small, let's try this again. And at the same time, it created a lot of other deformations that are still observable. But when the recent study investigated some of these deformations, and when it actually tried to look at the potential age of these different surface features that we have on Mercury, this study right here discovered something completely different. It discovered that some of these formations actually appeared billions of years after the initial collision. Essentially, this impact here could not really explain some of the other features we're observing, which also appear to be implosions of some sorts. And there is probably only one good explanation here, and the scientists behind this paper 
make a good point in trying to explain what they think happened here. They believe that, just like a lot of other terrestrial planets in the solar system, at some point Mercury very likely experienced a lot of collisions and a lot of different materials including various types of ices, things like water, things like organic compounds, were delivered to the surface of Mercury and thus created really large deposits of water and probably a lot of ice as well underneath the surface and also all over the place on Mercury. The scientists behind this paper believe that most of this water and most of these ices were actually hidden beneath the surface itself and uh, created these really large deposits not so different from various lakes we've discovered on Mars, including underground lakes we found not so long ago, forming these underground reserves that were essentially ice at first. But because Mercury is so close to the Sun and because there's a lot of heat generated, with time all of this ice started melting. But it's also possible that some of this ice was melted for other reasons, we don't really know why. Eventually though, a lot of ice turned into liquid water, potentially creating habitable conditions underneath Mercury, with some of the water being warm enough to actually support life. But eventually, even this water started to become vapor and then disappear and escape through various cracks in the surface, essentially creating these really, really large, but at the same time also completely empty caverns, which eventually collapsed because there was nothing to support them. And all of these collapsed caverns created all of these unusual features that suggest implosions all over the surface of Mercury. In other words, it seems like there was quite a lot of various ices and essentially a lot of different water uh, reserves underneath Mercurian surface. Now, obviously this doesn't suggest that there was life and that life was created at all, but assuming that the conditions were similar to early Earth and possibly early Mars, assuming that there was actual liquid water and organic compounds, and also, as I mentioned previously, considering the fact that we've discovered the life on Earth in some of the most extreme conditions underneath the surface, this actually does not seem so implausible after all. Life could have totally existed there, it could have evolved there, and the thing is, it can still be around. Mostly because, even today, in the polar regions of Mercury, there's still quite a lot of various water deposits that we've discovered not so long ago. And some of this water is still being generated on Mercury even today, and I've talked about how this is done in one of the previous videos. In other words, it seems like the terrestrial planets in our solar system all have a reason and a chance to, at some point in their existence, create habitable conditions and to potentially help life evolve as well. But interestingly, the one planet we never really expected to have any habitable conditions now also has a reason to be the target for new studies. There's now a big chance here that we might find life underneath the surface as well, just like on Mars. And since in terms of mass and in terms of the actual size, both Mercury and Mars are not really that different, with Mercury actually having a little bit more magnetosphere as well, it's actually the only other terrestrial planet except for Earth that has magnetosphere, there's now a lot more reasons for us to go and investigate it in a little bit more detail. Maybe even this should take precedence over Mars, because Mercury most likely also has a lot more other materials on its surface. And okay, I didn't mean to destroy this planet, but basically, here's another one. When it comes to mining, Mercury probably has a lot more stuff for us to find, discover, and profit from. Mars, mm, not so much. But since unfortunately there are no new missions planned in the next few years, we're not really going to find out more about Mercury until one of the countries decide to plan a mission there, possibly land there, explore underground and maybe even decide to create a small colony for human settlers. And because we know that there's water there, there's no reason for us not to try. Because honestly Mercury has now just become a little bit more interesting, probably even a lot more interesting. I would even say that a lot more interesting than Mars. But I guess until someone decides to go and explore it, we're not really going to find out anything else. Until we discover more, or until we learn more about Mercury and other terrestrial planets, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space sciences, and who, I guess, likes to see planets destroyed, because once in a while, I tend to do that. And also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. On that note, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.